I want to ask you about uh, Tesla uh, AI because this is a bit, a little bit about uh, different than than crypto. But so the format for those who are just joining our live stream um, is we're doing the first hour just kind of uh, chatting about all things crypto, and I want to talk about Tesla a bit too. But um, the second hour is going to be open question a question answer from our viewers, and um, so if you have a question, save it for the second hour. Um, but uh, I know James, you've been you know. Um, you worked at NVIDIA, you, you, you understand the chip side, you, you've analyzed Tesla's hardware, et cetera. Um, we know that you know, Tesla has their so-called hardware three in their cars, they're probably working on hardware four. Now they're, they've been working on this Tesla Jojo supercomputer train, neural net training computer for the past year or two, and they're pre prepping for a possible Tesla AI. Like what's your take on kind of Tesla Dojo, like, is it really needed? I mean, do they, do they really have to create their own, you know, neural net training supercomputer? Couldn't they use some other solution? And does, what are the implications uh, for Tesla creating their own supercomputer? Are there other, can they use it as a, you know, kind of AWS neural net training as a service? Or there, what's the kind of potential going forward with that? Yeah, I'm so, I was surprised when they talked about building their own training hardware. Um, because as you say, it's um, training hardware is a lot more complex to design than inference soft hardware. Inference hardware is the hardware you use to run the, the neural network. Training hardware is the hardware you use to create the neural network in the first place. Um, the big difference is during the training hardware, you have to feed it a lot of data and it's the training happens in the data center. Whereas inference is, is you've already got the software, you just deploy it on kind of like, it's like deploying your app on the iPhone. You just run it in the local environment, in which case the FSD computer in the car. So um, like if you look at AI chip startups, there are way more startups doing inference um, hardware than, than training because training is just a lot more complicated. So when I, when I looked, when I saw the announcement came out, I was like, why do you need to do this? And I think it comes down to the fact that they have a very specific AI problem and they have a, a, a they have the largest quantity of video training data in, in the world and I, for a specific application driving. I think the only other one you would compare to is something like YouTube. Um, for this application of driving, they have more content, they have more data than every car manufacturer included times probably a thousand, right? It's orders and orders of magnitude more and more. Um, and if they were to use off the shelf hardware, if they were to order um, a computer from, from NVIDIA say, like build together a, a cluster of NVIDIA DGX servers, I think it would cost them probably on the order of maybe maybe a hundred million dollars or, or close to that, right? It would be probably in that in that range, and the cost for them to build this in house, given their orig their they, they already have a team for building FSD, is probably on the order of tens of millions of dollars. But that's not even the point. I'm, I'm sure it's not about saving fifty million dollars because Tesla's capex is in the billions. I think it's more about achieving what's not really plausible using off-the-shelf solutions. Um, if you, NVIDIA's hardware is designed to, to deal with all kinds of neural networks, language, speech, video, um, you know, pure reinforcement learning. It's designed to solve, their strategy is to launch one chip architecture for every industry vertical and then address the verticals using software. Tesla is a vertical use case, a single use case uh, problem, right? We just want to solve driving. So I think their motivation is basically saying, we have this very specific use case. We have an abnormal amount of data that the current kind of computers and supercomputers out there are not even designed to kind of optimally handle. You would need a lot of them to sort of fit it in. So, and we already have a generation of experience building our own um, um, kind of chips uh, using our internal team. So they have, think of it this way. Um, uh, Andre Karpathy has a very specific s set of software requirements. He can basically list in 10 bullets, if you can give me a computer with X, uh, how much teraflops, how much memory, what kind of interconnect, and what kind of, kind of neural network architecture support, I would be able to train at what rate. And if you plug in that kind of requirement spec into what's available off the shelf or Amazon, it probably costs an absurd amount of money. Um, whereas if he kind of looks across the cubicle at the hardware team and say, hey, can you build that for me, um, Pete, or whoever's running the show right now, that person will be like, yes, we can build a five, nano chip, five nanometer chip of this kind of size. We can build a custom interconnect that's perfect for your video. Well, in fact, like we can size the buffers to match the size of the video buffers. 
and build a super optimized chip for that and attach storage really and memory really close to to the chip. Um, and you know we could probably ship it by the end of call it this year. And that would allow them to basically kind of leapfrog any competition. Not that they have any real competition, um, but it would allow them to essentially take all the data they have, which right now is too large to plausibly fit in the training hardware you can buy off the shelf, but actually make it fit in, in this custom computer they built. And if they can make it fit, they can train the perfect neural network that would actually solve self-driving. And you optimize that, shrink it, ship it in FSD in the inference size. In, mm. in, in, so, um, so what's the feature of this? So, okay, so Tesla makes their own internal you know, neural net training, you know, clusters. It's it's great. It works well for them. Um, so, it seems like there's a couple paths here. One path is so fine. It's an internal. It's an internal. You know, neural net training computer. Fine. Who cares? You know, Tesla does, and the the results and the benefits are purely full self driving, right? What what yep. it impacts that. Another route to go about it is saying, hey, can they use this stuff that they've learned and that they've built, right, to do something else with? Can they, you know, are there other business lines? You know, can they open it up as, you know, a service? Is there any potential for that even, you know? Is, is that even like, you know, some revenue that's significant or not? I mean, what's your take on, on how, what are, what is the kind of the significance of the, you know, the potential of them building their own uh, training hardware? I mean, it's easy to, to like, kind of go down the road of, oh, you have a chip, now you can kind of build an AWS or, or diversify your business. It's, I don't think that's how it works at all for this kind of thing. Um, the whole point of vertical, like you, your first business decision, your first strategy decision you make as a business is, are you a horizontal business or a vertical business? If you're a horizontal business, you build a component like NVIDIA and you try to sell it to as many people as possible. If you're a vertical kind of business model like Apple, you build a very specialized thing for yourself and you keep it damn well to yourself and you don't give anyone. And, and if anyone even builds something that even looks like it, you sue the hell out of them, right? So you have to, that's any, th those are the only two business models that make sense. Anything in the middle just kind of like, is, is like, doesn't make sense. It's very confused and it's not optimized for anything. Tesla is pursuing the vertical strategy. Um, even if they like, A, they shouldn't have the desire to share this with anyone because it just literally, just throwing away your competitive advantage in the in, in the wind, and and it's not like this is this is part of the mission of um, accelerating sustainable energy. Um, this is not battery technology where it's just it's good for the environment if you share it. This is proprietary software technology that you know will help you gener differentiate against everyone else doing it. So it's it's not part of that open ethos. Um, and secondly, horizontal business models have entirely different requirements and and operating kind of. Um, realities than, than vertical business models. If you want to sell this chip as a service, now you have to build out a whole team that is about supporting your customer's use cases. So let's say Tesla is like, okay, we're a all you know image-based sensor array. We have no LiDAR and, and this is why we built the chip this way. You try to sell it to someone that's using LiDAR, they'll be like, oh, can you uh, add support for, for a LiDAR image map? Can you add support for this buffer, that buffer? Soon you're just like, you need a whole team to kind of service customers. That's not what Tesla does. Tesla does not service the needs of EW and GM. You know, they're in the business of serving their own teams first and foremost. So just look at through the lens of Apple. You know, I wrote a blog on this kind of Tesla through the lens of Apple. The strategy is exactly the same. They're going to make their own things the absolute best first and foremost. Um, and that's their, their kind of lever of differentiations against competitors. They neither have the desire, nor does it make any business sense to make it horizontal because it just, it, 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 it slows them down and it makes no significant revenue. Mm -hmm. um, Elon Musk was saying that, you know, they think that he thinks that Tesla can become one of the largest AI companies in the world, at least like shallow minded AI, <laughs> you know, not deep minded like Google. But um, and then you've got this whole Tesla AI day coming up. And if you look at historically their events um, with autonomy day and battery day, they have been very significant, like strategy events, five or 10 year foundational events that that, you know, that they've hosted um, for a Tesla AI day, you know, like, you know, one angle you could say, hey, they'll just showcase some of the stuff they're working on autonomy or whatever, you know, that narrow case. Um, but my question is like, does that really deserve a whole Tesla AI day? And then it's also in light of, of Elon's recent comments that they could possibly become one of the largest AI companies. So is there something else you think that Tesla can showcase um, or really you know, make Tesla AI day about um, 
and then the other angle is like Elon saying, "Hey, we tried to solve autonomy, but in but on the way along the way, we've had to solve a lot of real world AI problems. I say physical world navigation, all this stuff in the busy, you know, world of humans and bikes and kids and pedestrians, all this stuff. And so there's a lot of expertise built up with that. That is not just for. I mean, you're trying to solve autonomy, but you've built up all this extra." Kind of real world, you know, solutions and expertise. Like, what, what, where is this headed? Do you see potential for Tesla to get into other real world AI applications like robots, like drones, like I don't know what else? But、um, kind of, what's your take on all this? That's interesting. I wasn't aware AI day is coming.、Um, that's that's very interesting. The last time they did, I think, was a battery day, and, and they showcased some advances there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Elon said I think it was、uh, late July is his expectation of. Tesla AI day, so yeah, yeah. I mean, I think probably the most obvious thing they they need to show is material progress on on FSD, right? Because you know they've been in beta and and trialing this out. They they made promises that they've broken over and over again. So I think they need to show a demo that's far more compelling than the Palo Alto demo they did, you know, a few years ago.、Um, so I think. Something on the order of complexity of, of you know busy streets,、uh, San Francisco. They need to show a a kind of like draw dropping demo、um, to kind of put to put some of this criticism and skepticism from the press behind them.、Uh, I think they may talk about certainly Dojo and and the, the kind of the infrastructure side of how how they're going to differentiate and, and the mechanisms of training on large scale video data, which is no one is doing. So those are probably nuts and bolts. But if you were to speculate on future places they could go, I think what's interesting is OpenAI has provided a perspective on what kind of business you can build with、uh, really large-scale models. So OpenAI is a started off as a research organization for AI, kind of like the DeepMind of, of the U.S., but evolved to a commercial company.、Um, and their kind of first product is a product called GPT-3, and it is a generative language model, basically a, a neural network that can write. Uh, call it English, and it's it's very generalized in the sense that it not only writes English, it can write poetry, it can write it can write translate between languages, it can write JavaScript, right? So because it because it was trained on the entire corpus of text on the internet, so it's read every Stack Overflow, it's read every you know programming manual,、uh, it can actually output code.、Um, so when you train across an extremely large data set. You can basically learn all the sub kind of use cases expressed in that data set. What Tesla potentially could build with its with its video data set is a generalized computer vision data set. So if it if the result of kind of、um, Dojo and and all this data is that it can, with very little human labeling, build a neural network that has robust Understanding of images and video. I think that would be, you could think of that as a GPT-3 equivalent, but for video,、uh, and that could perhaps be deployed in all kinds of adjacent industries. It could be deployed in, you know, surveillance, security,、um, robotics. There, are, there are many, many applications. So that could become, conceivably, a software kind of、uh, uh, a SaaS product or a or like a API that they could offer to developers. Uh, that that could gen- just generate pure software revenue.、Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I want to actually ask you about this. This is interesting because that's kind of one of the ideas I, I was thinking about too. It's like okay, so if you are solving kind of real world AI where you actually have to, with vision, have to identify every single object, but not just every single object. You have to identify its velocity or how fast it's moving, its its distance. From you and from others, and make predictions on where things are going as well. You're solving all of these problems, right? With understanding, you know, real world AI, actually maybe creating like a 3D type of, you know,、um, understanding of what's going on. Then that this type of expertise in real world can possibly apply to many other, you know, scenarios or use cases. I mean, one angle is like, oh, Tesla could possibly go into. Robots, physical robots, or drones, where they, it needs that type of real-world understanding, right? Another angle is, hey, maybe they can open it up as a web service or API or something, right? Where, hey, if Tesla has like this, this massive, not just data set, but you know, this neural net and vision platform where they can identify n- not just objects, but again, it's like everything going around in that you know environment. They could you know let other companies, other people you know latch onto that, but then. 
one of the questions I was having was, okay, so, but how does it get better, right? If, if, if a company is using it to, for a specific case and it needs to be improved on in that specific case, right? Uh, let's say they're you know, monitoring lizards or something, some really niche case, and Tesla doesn't have a lot of lizards. Um, is there a way where you know, Tesla can run a service where this stuff is, can be improved by the very developers right, that are using it, actually input these images, labels, or something where it could actually train the whole neural net to make it better? Is that too complicated, or is that something that's possible, you think? It's not very easy with current technology to kind of for that kind of neural network to learn to incrementally learn a new class. It kind of has to learn from scratch again. So typically training you, like human training is human training or human learning is incremental. So if you have to learn a new thing today, you can just kind of write that on top of your existing knowledge. You don't just you don't have to like delete or, or you know, start from scratch. But the way kind of neural networks typically is trained is that um, to if you have if your neural network has been trained on 100 lizards uh, and you need to learn a new class, the, the hundred and first lizard, you have to kind of train it. You basically add the, 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 one, the one hundred and first data set into your data pool. And you run it again to, to learn it because it all sums up to a probability of one. So the, typically the way it's done is not very easy for that. You can do transfer learning, but you tend to forget the older stuff as well. Um, and for GPT-3, there is, to use that as an analogy, like there is no way the customer can augment the training data. OpenAI does everything, gives you an API, you have practically no control. You can condition your, ans your prompt and answers, but you can't add to their training data set. Um, and you can certainly do a little bit of incremental training as a customer and then, and then use that as a custom solution to yourself. Um, so I think it, it's not very easy. I think it, like from a Tesla's perspective, instead of being that more flexible, I think it's more like addressing the low hanging fruit of if we can just offer this base layer computer vision, generalized computer vision model, uh, let's see what you can do with it. And without doing any customization, GPT-3 has kind of proven out that that model, even with no customization client side, actually works pretty well, can generate many useful use cases. You know, thousands of um, developers are working on it. So. I think step one, you don't have to get too fancy. Just uh, give people access to an incredibly robust vision model, and I'm sure they'll figure out what to do with it. Yeah, um, yeah. that's kind of fascinating. Open, you know, GPT three for vision or real world, um, and I mean the <laughs> just thinking about that is kind of interesting because, um, yeah, it's. I mean, one of the one of the the challenges is like, you know, with Open AI, they were able to get billions and billions, you know this text from everywhere on the internet to, to analyze and feed their neural nets. And, but in Tesla's case, it's more limited. It's a narrow niche of just driving, right? Um, it's not really, because there, there's so many ways to interact with the real world that isn't just driving. And so it seems it's, it's not as generalized as, for example, OpenAI's approach to language and text, all that stuff. It's more, and so it would seem like the big challenge to become an, a GPT-3 for real world is to get all of those different use cases of how how the real world is interacting with each, with each, with each other. You know, there's like, it's not just cars in the real world, right? So I think it's a vertical specific um, uh, network, neural network, right? It's a driving, uh, it's a generalized network for, for kind of driving. For general vision, yeah, it's like, it doesn't even have images of inside the house, right? By definition. So uh, I think that is challenging. I think probably the most easiest adjacent industry it can do is to maybe license it to other automakers who who need help because they don't have they, they have like less than one percent of open a, of Tesla's data set, so they could make that a kind of a licensing business to that industry vertical. Um, that's probably the most obvious thing to do. But yeah, if you're a Toyota or GM, I, I think you would be at loath to license this piece of software from Tesla, who's already <laughs> killed you, and now you're gonna pay them to kill you more. It's, <laughs> But, but if you don't do it, like, what is your choice? You're gonna use Intel Mobileye with like this chip and there's not really a programmable stack and, and still you have no data. It's like, there are not a lot of choices. <laughs> that's, a, that's a rough one. <laughs> I don't know what you do in that case.